All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, we are live in full effect right here, right now with Hip Hop Pioneer. We got Silver Fox of the Fantasy 3 live on the line. How are you doing this evening? That's what's up. You're in Silver Fox in the house, Fantasy 3. Silver Fox, Tommy Rock, Larry D, 1983. You know what I mean? The show of rock, fighters in the city, summer, the buck stops here. So, uh, good to be here, bro. And I got to say, first and foremost, before we dive into this interview, thank you so much for giving us a little bit of your time this evening. You know, um, I wasn't around for, for like the 80s of hip hop, man. But I just want to say thank you for giving a giving a young lad like myself just some of your time this evening. Oh, no problem. No problem. No, I mean, it's a pleasure. But I got to ask you, man, like taking you to back to the very beginning, like what actually sparked and inspired you to actually get into the music industry initially? Well, actually... Uh, when, as a youngster, I went to Manhattan School of Music, so I studied music, and uh, I went to City College for music. But prior to that, when hip hop started, I, I actually heard, I saw DJ Hollywood, and it was Eddie Chiba and the Chiba crew. They were at this uh, college joint, Columbia University, and and once I saw that, it was 1977, I think. And when I saw that, it just made me say, God, I want to do this, you know. And plus, I'm surrounded by some of the best guys, like the Fearless Four. They live. They were living up in the same place where I'm at. Crazy Eddie, Master O.C., uh, Treacherous Three was up the block. You know, we had Dougie Fresh around the corner. You know, so I'm surrounded by just MCs. It made me really want to get into it. And also, as well, I actually read that you were originally a member of the Light Brothers in the or in the mid 1970s. I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about that group. And of course, how did you meet the other members? Yeah. Oh, okay. The Light Brothers. That was actually with Ronnie Vaughn. He was the dancer, and there was Mike Knight, who is my cousin. And the, the Light Brothers were actually dancing around me as being with the rapper up front, and they were the dancers. So Ron which was very athletic, and Mike would do the flip, you know, put the hands in the cups, and he'd do the back flip, et cetera. So we were the Light Brothers. We were actually on a, uh, a television show on cable, and this, this was 1977. Yeah, good, good history. I'm glad you know that stuff. <laughs> I, I got to say, God bless the internet. You know what I mean? I, I'd love to do my digging before every single interview. Um, you know what I mean? And I got to say, if I can't find it on the internet, I most definitely will read a book. Right, right. Because the Light Brothers were really like in obscurity. We we actually just went around. That that was actually the guys that I went to uh, an after hour spot with where I, that I go traveling into New York because uh, with Mike Knight and Ronnie Ron, they were based in White Plains, which is upstate New York. So, uh, so we would have to gravitate into the city and do our thing. So then I had dancers with me, which, is, <laughs> which I thought was kind of cool, you know what I mean? And I also read as well that you were actually part of a bar band out in Alaska. Like, I, I want to ask, man, like, what was it like going all the way out to Alaska? Because, like, Alaska versus New York City, that, that that's a big jump in just, you know, scenery. Yeah. Yeah, basically. But Alaska was really, was really nice. Uh, I was married. I had a, a wife that was in the military. So I went to Fort Greeley, Alaska. And this is off of Fairbanks. It was, a, it was a culture shock because, you know, you have to plug your cars in to a, to a heating system. You make sure your engine block doesn't uh, freeze up. And uh, I hit a moose. <laughs> I hit a moose out there. I was in this band. It was a military band. And we played in, uh, in bars. And uh, after I left that band, there was another group that, that I saw in the bar. And we, I, I, I also forget the name of the band because we were just, it was I on the cungas and doing vocals, and there was a guitarist, and it was a, it was a great band. And uh, when I left Alaska, I was only there for a short time. So, <laughs> and hitting the moose can really ruin your day. I most definitely agree. I, I think at least everybody down here in Canada either hit a moose or you hit a deer. I, I, I got I to gotta pre pretty much say your yeah. car was pretty much totaled after that, eh? Yeah, it was totaled. Then I had to wait for the, 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 uh, for the indigenous people. I had to wait for them to come and pick the caucus up for some reason. <laughs> I'm like, why did I have to wait for that? And the state trooper, uh, yeah, it was a whole situation. And, and the moose is bigger than I thought it was. Uh, 
you made it out you know what i mean i hope i hope after the moose totaled your car i hope you know what i mean like you know i hope the moose was okay as well yeah well you know we went up the, the moose you know the moose is gone they came and got him and, you know it, was, it wasn't my fault but uh, yeah. you know and i regret that and uh i'm glad i didn't have any fractured bones or whichever like that you know and i regret it which is why i i sat there to make sure that the animal was disposed of properly instead of just, you know, leaving it on the road or something like that and, you know, get told to you know, leave a carcass of a moose on the road. You know, I notified the proper authorities and et cetera. So, you know, doing the right thing with it. And also as well, when you actually went back to New York, man, you actually became a member of the group The Fantasy Three. And I have to ask you, like, what's the story behind that iconic group? Well, with Fantasy Three, but first I was a solo MC, which I'm just Silver Fox doing my thing in New York. And uh, and Tito, devastating Tito from the Fearless Floor, he lived in in the project that I grew up in. It was, you know, so we all grew we were close to each other, and he introduced me to them, and he said that they wanted to form a group. So I'm thinking, well, let's let's see. <laughs> You know, I discussed it with them, and, and we decided to form a group and and started getting to the point of making records. So basically, I was the I was the MC and and kind of an kind of an instructor. You know, because because uh, they weren't MC, so I had to actually let them know how an MC is. So they get their <laughs> they get their instructions from me, and we would become fantasy three. And they got better, and they did what they had to do, and I love those guys, you know. So uh, yeah, and then, so that's how we got together, and then we started uh, looking and shopping around our records. We had the demo of this Yola, and nobody wanted it, so we went to uh, a, a small label called Specific Records, and they actually said they wanted to do it. We made a proper demo. You know, uh, with um, we made a proper record with, actually with uh, Pumpkin on on the on the instrumentation, and that's the guy from King of the Beast and Enjoy Records. He did uh, the Treacherous Three, and he did a, he did a lot of guys. And so you know, Pumpkin was really like putting a stamp on the record itself. So we made sure that the DJs would give a listen to it and play. And also as well, and the rest of it. I just want to ask this. I do know that, you know what I mean, you probably got asked this many, many times there, Silver, but I read something about the war in 84 that, 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 the, sorry, that the Fantasy 3 was actually involved in. In your own words, I was wondering, would you be able to tell us a story about that? And, of course, what transpired that day in 1984? Well, 1984. Well, first we have to go back to a little bit at the end of 1983 when we made our first record at Geova. Then all of a sudden, Crash Cool, they come out with Crash Cool on the radio, you know, and it's, it's strikingly similar to our record, which which got me upset, and I'm saying stuff all over the radio. Instead of calling them the Crash Cool, I'm calling them the Trash Cool, and, uh, you know, just dissing them on the radio and so forth. So then we set up a battle. The battle was in a club called Broadway International, and over there, it was time for us to have a, a nice battle. We had our record biters in the city, and that was dedicated to the crash crew because we, we were like, yo, they did our stuff, you know? <laughs> so I'm like, and I'm trying to keep it in, in, a, in the context. I'm not trying to put some little verbals in there, you know what I mean? But, I mean, we did what we had to do. So it was a battle, and I was prepared for this battle, and I, I think I destroyed them in it. So now... It's time to fight. They want to fight me. So it's like, okay. <laughs> you know, so we had our little fight, and it, it was really skirmish. You know, if nobody got shot, stabbed, or, or all of that, that's a good day. <laughs> 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 you 
Good old fashioned fist fight. Pardon? I just said a good old fashioned fist fight. Yeah, that's basically what it was. It was a good old fashioned fist fight. With a bunch of us having a ball and, you know, getting our point across. And that was that. It's not like it was nothing for me to brag and boast about and nothing for Crash to brag and boast about. You know, we all just come confronted each other at that time. And the confrontation didn't lead to anyone being off the planet, so it was a good confrontation. And hey, you know what? I, I gotta, I gotta admit, I like, I like those days, man. Where you know what I mean? Instead of getting on the internet and melting people, you just, you just right there, you fight it out, and hopefully after the fight, you're all good. Yeah. Nowadays, they're trying to see. Me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, man, what's wrong with you? So sensitive. Yeah, what? Wow. You know, it's like man, it's crazy. That's just crazy now. But that's the way it's done, though. That's the way it's done. It's a good skill. It's like a rugby. It's like playing playing rugby. I like, you know, man, and just on the floor, bounce, bounce on each other. You know, it's, a, it's just basic. It's, it's like, you know, we shouldn't be trying to kill each other. But yeah, that was cool. That was cool, man. Even though on the radio I was talking stuff like I, I want to murder the world, you know, break their neck and stuff like that. Hey, but also at the end of the day, man, it was like years ago, right? You're 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 pretty much a, you're pretty well a kid then, right? You know what I mean? So like they say, kids do the darnest things, man. Yeah, basically, and and that was good. It was good times there, you know. So we we, we really had a had a good war in '84. So you know that was that was a good one. And our records were out. We did fighters in the city, so that was that was doing well. And, was disputing over over this, this Yorok situation, which caused us to actually go to a different label, which which was formed on, under CTL Records. You know, and that was that was uh, Chico Charlie Larry. You know, they had the the record label. So that's where we put out our second record. And also, as well, you actually established a reputation as a battle rapper facing off against. Uh, against, uh, sorry, a man that would later go on, a man, sorry, that would later go on to be as Cool G Rap. I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about what transpired that evening when you battled the legendary Cool Cool G Rap. Ah, uh, Cool G Rap and I always battled. <laughs> we had battles left and right. We, were, we met at a club called Joe Grant. And uh, in Joe Grant, I was, I was actually able to hone my skills. It's an after-hour spot, which is like, you know, from the hustlers and people that finish their stuff in, in the daytime and, and midnight and still up at 2 in the morning when we, we filling up a spot and partying, you know. So it was one of those spots. And, and G-Rap was always there, you know. So I started going in there and they let me get on their mic. And so I'm coming in like every weekend. Yes, so I know it turns into a party place. And QG rap he, he started doing his rap, you know. We, we always battle back and forth. And this actually, you know, helped him to hone some skills of things. So he can know where, where his battle skills, where his words were at, you know. But he wasn't the, he wasn't the cool G rap that, that y'all know, you know, because he changed. He, 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 it, it, uh, it, it influenced him enough to change the way he's doing things. So at that time when we battled each other, that wasn't that cool G rap. <laughs> But he turned into that because of because of our battle, you know, and it helped him to hone his skills and to actually take. Because I'm un, unorthodox, I think I started at that time, especially I started using haiku and and sonics and you know and, and trickery and run-on sentences and multi-syllabletic structures and I thought you know it was like Picasso I'm going oh man I I could put this in there I wonder if my cadence would change here and and if I could, and then I'm talking to people going, man, imagine if you could, uh, you know, like Dr. Frankenstein or something. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm drawing up a board. And, and so it's, it's something that he follows to actually, um, you know, be cool, be right. The guy, the guy that we know, you know. Yeah, and that, that I'm proud of, you know. And even on his first record, Road to Riches, he put a special dedication to Silver Fox, you know what I mean, because of my influence there. And, and that's something I'm proud of. You know. and, I, and I have to ask you as well, man. Like, 
Because I, I know you probably battled way more individuals than just Cool G, but I have to ask you, like, what is one of your most memorable battles that you actually remember from back in the day? Battle on LL Cool J? <laughs> that was fun. We battled. We battled all the time. <laughs> so, and then I had, there, there was a, the more the more formidable battle, and it's right there in Joe Grant. And, and even himself, he wish he had that on tape. Because it, it came to a point where it was like, yo, he told me he's going to be ready for me. He's ready. And he knew all my lines. Because <laughs> we hung out together, so he knew every, he knew all my lines, so I had to change it up and, be, and get ready to battle him because they'll wind up playing him at the same time. <laughs> and, and we can't have that. That's like, nah, nah. So that's a formidable battle. You know, I had street battles, and it was to earn a reputation. Because people had to know who Civil Fox was, because nobody knew who I was, and I came out to Woodwork, and suddenly I'm I'm Civil Fox, and I'm this dude, and they're like, oh, who's this guy? You know, and I know so I know all the guys, I know Peter and them, I, I know who Trust is, and I know who. So me coming in, and and what helped me was that I had my own microphone. So a lot of times they had they had to put me on the mic, and then I start shining, and you know, so it was a battle time. It was like, man. So I, I don't even, I don't even commit them to memory. I, I don't, cause it's like, man, okay, I dust you off. Yeah, we good, man. We good. No, man, yo, you did all right. Then I move on. I'm going somewhere else, and I, I'm laughing with my man Kevsky, my partner. He was my partner, you know, and he would take me all over the place in New York. So it was like, and I'm laughing, joking, and we on to the next one. But that, that was the way for me to actually get a reputation where they go, yo, watch out for Silver Fox. Yo, watch out for me on that. Then they start not wanting me on their mics in places, you know. They don't, they don't want me to do my thing. So I become a spectator standing there going, yeah, all right. You know what I mean? So we had to set up our own battle, too, especially even with Glorious Four, where, where we had Terry G and, and Shotgun and my man Kev Ski and my brother West, too. I mean... We were we were battling in places, so that's where that's where my skills come from in, in battling first because people you know when I found out that they was going to disrespect me and not know and not let me do my thing like I don't know what I'm doing I'm like oh yeah well come on let me show you so you know then I show all these different styles and people get confused you know but the the younger people gravitated to it. You know, people like that little Cool J, you know, like Cool G Rap and like, like that whole circle. And because I'm, I'm in that, in a circle of a poetical, poetic lyricist, you know, like DLB and uh, from the Phyllis Four. This guy is, is, is structure and the way he does things with Special K and Mo D, you know, with, uh, oh man, and LA Sunshine, their whole structure is different. You could take all of them and combine them and make one person. <laughs> that would be like, yeah. So, man, I had to battle people. And the one thing I have to ask you, because I've been really curious since we first set this up, because as we already know, you are the you are also the mentor for LL Cool J. And I know you mentioned earlier that one of your one of your most famous famous uh, most memorable sorry battles was with Cool G and LL Cool J. But I gotta ask you, man, like, how did yourself and LL Cool J get connected? And of course, like, what was it like actually just mentoring a young LL? Yeah, you have to know, young LL is the arrogant, the I am who I am, LL Cool J, I am. He, he came to me as LL Cool J. The beginning of that was, was in 1983 when I'm working in the record shop. I, we got our store over there where we do our distribution for our record label. And uh, LL Cool J came down. And he, and, he, and he was talking to me because he wanted to get signed. And I'm like, well, you know, he coming at me, man. We just, we just skills at You know, he started saying his lines. I could see his structure and everything was really, you know, well. There were things he, he needed to touch up on. But, you know what I mean? We, we battle right there because uh, I'm saying lines and he's saying lines. I'm just, and then he realized that, you know, that I'm that guy, that I'm Silver Fox. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, you know, he wanted to be around me and hang with me and, and learn from me and, and no no way to breathe at him. But, uh, and then my people wouldn't sign him, which was crazy. But as 
you look at it now, you know, and see where it went from the beginning of his career to now, it's a good thing he wasn't signed to LA. But, um, you know, so, so uh, LL came down to the record shop and we were hanging out a lot. You know, we were sitting there talking structure of rhymes and differences and, you know, it was all it was all like science. Like, he's coming down with his notebook <laughs> and with new rhymes and we take him to, to Joe Grant's and try it out. And, you know, so it was it was a camaraderie, you know. So so the thing is, is that he picked up, he learned, and he, like you say, I'm his teacher and, and when it comes to rhyme, when it comes to hip-hop, you know. And he keeps going with it, which is, which is uh, something I'm proud of, too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, because like, I always talk structure. If you're going to be around me long enough, I'm, I'm talking mathematics structure and, and that could go into into line. It could go into hip hop. Everybody's trying to be the same thing sometimes, you know what I mean? But I'm loving like the change when one person does something and you go, damn, that's the same. You know what I mean? But then everybody wanna do it. Everybody else copy it and he's like, Oh man, why you gonna copy? Why you can't be you, you know? And I have to ask you yeah, as well so pertaining to think... Oh, sorry about that. Sorry about that, Silver. Yes. No. I was just gonna ask you because, like, as you already know, man, like El Cool is freaking huge. You know what I mean? Like, back when he was a kid, could you actually see him doing the stuff he's doing today, like being an actor on NCIS? You know, going, becoming platinum, if not diamond, by now. Well, the thing is, though, is, is he talked about what his what his future was gonna be. He wanted to set his future, and and. I can see him going in, like as a youngster, when I met him, he was 16 years old, you know. He was, he was a skinny 16-year-old kid that was that was hungry, you know what I mean? He's growing up with his grandmother, he don't have the best of clothes, you know. He's trying to utilize this rap structure, and he's a genius, too. He's very articulate. And this was a 16-year-old that, that his, you know, his whole learning curve, it's higher, you know, his IQ level is there, it's, it's genius level. So all he needed to do was to be surrounded by geniuses, you know, and people that was in the industry that can actually propel him to where he's supposed to go. You know, he, he's, he's a rocket. He was a rocket. The first thing, I'm, I'm bad. Just took to the video. That's a rocket ship ready to explode. That's, it's like, you know, and there's nowhere to go but up. So and and that was the thing, and, and I'm telling them that too as a youngster because it was his time. At that time, it was time for a new generation. You know, it was time for young people to step in and, and claim this rap. You know, get some, come and get some of this rap structure. You're living it. You're you're 16, you're 17, you're 18. You're, that's your music. You're some, you're to make some stuff for you. You know, and it's like that's where it comes from. That's why. You got, you know, you got to love, you got to love when it changes over again, when it goes to something else the next time, and the next time, it goes. it's like you got to love the evolution of hip-hop, and, and the evolution of rap, you know, how it goes into commercials and acting, and, you know, ice is acting, and Ice Cube, and movies, and, the, you know, all of this is, is the, is the the way it should have been, the way the structure is, the how to go. So we, we lay our foundations on it. Then you, then you take that and you climb up and put something on top of the foundation. Then you put some, you know, you set up the, the structure, put the piping in and put it on Yeah, because this is oh, the fourth generation of hip hop or whatever. So it's a, it's a house that's being built. Now it turns from a house into, yo, know, let's build a skyscraper. Who knows where it's going to go? <laughs> you know? and, I, I've seen that in L at a young, at a young age. The people you could see when they're young, like Outkast when they first came out, and like uh, Paul Wright's teachers, and like, you know, that, that young, it, it's about a young generation that, that has the energy, you know, the strength to propel stuff, you know what I mean? And, and make it their own. And the one thing I have to mention as well, pertaining to LL Cool G and Cool G Rap, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, 
I just love how these individuals, no matter how big they are in their career, they always come back and show you props. I've seen so many interviews where they always shout you out and be like, yo, I was mentored by Silver Fox. You know what I mean? I just really love that these individuals are like really big, but they still show props to the individual that made them who they are today. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it makes me, you know, I feel honored for that. Uh, and, and they know me. They know I'm not, you know, I'm not one to be like, yo, know, to, to be stomping around talking about, uh, you know, blowing my own horn. And be like, yo, man, I told that loud, yo, yo, I told that loud, yo, yo. You know, I don't do that. that is, that's, I'm not built like that. And there's other other people within rap. I mean, I've, I've joined groups in Jersey, and, and I lived in Savannah, and talk with the uh, label of Pure Pain Records and know what, I know, I mean, I've been around and, and it's all hip-hop structure, that's me and, and I live it, you know what I mean, and I'm good, <laughs> I'm, I'm living kind of good, you know what I mean? so I'm all right, God bless me, you know, but yeah, yeah, I'm glad that they give me props because I deserve it, because, <laughs> you know, I'm the fox, man, I deserve that, but you know, I don't want to be standing talking about I deserve it because I'm a humble cat too, you know what I mean? And so, you know, I'm glad that they're giving me love and, and props to that. And also as well, in the late 80s, you actually heard a contest on Jack, uh, sorry, on Jack the Rapper Radio in which, uh, sorry, contestants would actually call in and rap live on the air. And where, where you actually won, uh, sorry, first prize. I was wondering if you'd tell our listeners a bit more about what you won and what transpired during that contest. <laughs> That's funny, boy. I love that, boy. You know, stuff, I love that. Uh, I love that when people ask me different questions. You I was always that. But, you know, um, I, I, was, I wasn't doing anything as far as musical, you know, and rap and so forth. And, um, but I had I had all these lines because I'm, <laughs> you know, I had all this stuff. And um, and Jack the Rapper had a contest where you call in, and you and you play your own music, and you know you they'll save it, and uh, then it's gonna go into the contest, and uh, we'll figure out who who's gonna win. You know what I mean? So I kept I'm like that, that I sent some stuff in. I started spending all my stuff. This 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 I was like, yeah, let them see, let them see what's up. And um, I won the contest. And, and you know, it wasn't like I was being, you know, like they knew who I was or anything. You know, nobody even knew who I was. This is after after uh, Fantasy Two. So it's like, so I won the contest, and um, the, the prize would be to, to do a recording with Polygram Records that they were going to uh, produce a recording and, and put it out. You know what I mean? <laughs> so then the budget... They gave me like, you know, five thousand dollars or whatever. And I was kinda of upset about that, you know, because we all young and we make some mistakes. <laughs> but uh, I was kinda of upset about that. I, I took you know, I was with my manager and so forth, I threw the check on the floor or whatever. You know what I mean? So I went in uh we made a couple of recordings. And that was the the contest was but I was a winner. So I went to a, a show up in New York and uh, Will well was cutting, then uh, you know they they gave me the reward a, a little certificate, you know what I mean? And I was like, yeah, cool, you know. But I, I still was arrogant, also thinking, man. But I'm the man. I still was. And then when we go on the poly girl, I'm like, oh man, that's this here five grand for you know, so I have to go to the studio. I'm like, that that mean I'm gonna have to take some money out of my pocket. You know? So I, was, I wasn't feeling that. But, uh, you know, so we, we did something and tried to, you know, gave it the polygram, but they uh, didn't put it up. So that was that. But the contest, you know, it was cool. So I called in, I won it, um, I got celebrated, you know, got, yeah, I went in the studio, laid some stuff down, they got the masters, that's a wrap. And I have to ask you, just pertaining to the contest, like once you rap live on the air, do they decide the winner right away? Or do they take your contact information and give you a call back when they actually gathered up the winner? No, they they they, uh, they, took, they had, uh, they heard the vocal. They had to listen to everybody that submitted. So they listened to everybody. And out of everyone that they listened to or that submitted it, I was the winner, which was like, you know, that was, that was great. <laughs> I, I thought of 
that that kind of validated me a little bit too. Uh, and I'm like, wow, you know, it, it was really, it was really a good thing. You know, I really liked it. I liked that I won, and I was shocked and surprised. I was living in Atlantic City in Jersey, and um, you know, I was I was married. I had a had a kid on the way. You know, it was like. It, it was a different time. And also ahead, jumping ahead in the timeline a little bit, like right up to 2017, yeah. I also read that you actually made a pair of singles in uh, 2017 and then 18. I was wondering, what, what's the inspiration behind those two amazing singles? And of course, where can our listeners actually buy or stream themselves a copy today? Wow. First of all, I made a few records, and I made a I made a record with um, with DJ C called Wheels Fall Off, and that that's even available on my SoundCloud page. It's, it's a um, then there's one on the Reverb Nation page, and also the main thing is that I have so many pages. I'm so active that all you have to do is Google Silver Fox Music US. And it'll give you all the links, the pages, interviews, uh, music, free downloads, all my music pages, my SoundCloud pages. It'll give you my tweet information. So, you know, on Twitter, it'll give you my Facebook information. You know, you'll have everything all in one package if you Google Silver Fox Music US. That is. And also as well, I read as well that you were actually gearing up to release a solo project. I was wondering, what can our listeners expect from that when it does drop to the general public? Right now, I have I have a bunch of great producers. I have Dowell Fortune producing tracks. I have uh, DJ Steve, who's doing a great production. He did Will Fall Off for me. I did, uh, I did some production with Jay Tarn, the Matt. And there was a, a song that we did that uh, we have an album, which is available on Apple Music everywhere, Entente, E-N-T-E-N-T-E. And you can even uh, sample it, play some of the samples, and see the show with that. The new music that's coming, it's like I'm seeing the future. I'm seeing things. I'm being around a lot of, a lot of young people, and, <laughs> and I feel good. You know what I mean? I feel... I, I, I see the young and I see the old and I, I see where I'm at, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, I'm so alive and I'm so active and I'm so, you know, I'm hyperactive. <laughs> I'm so, I'm like that and I'm hyper man. And I got some music just called Messy Zip, some of my hyperness and some of my mellow stuff and some of my, my swag stuff, you know what I'm saying? And I, I'm, I'm keeping it hunky. I ain't talking about, you know, what I've got and, what I drive, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just making some good music with some good people. And and if, uh, you know, it's, it's coming along like this. So it's really mostly you're going to watch what? Wait for the vids. They come and go. Go to my YouTube page, too, and see my videos. Silver Fox, one, two, five. You know what I mean? Check out my videos from prior, too. The new music will be new not going to be old. I'm not into the yes, yes, no. It's not going to be, you know, I'm taking my time and I have, I have some good stuff coming and I think that, that everyone will like it, you know. <laughs> and I think I'm, I'm going to have some people in shock because I got some drill stuff. I got some, you know, some slow joint. I got some fast. I got, I'm, I just go with my mood and I have people that are letting me be me. So I'm kind of eccentric. So you're going to be seeing a whole bunch of sides of me. So I want to create a, uh, like I say, it was, I'm, I'm creating a drawing of, of Picasso. I'm, I'm connecting so many dots, and I'm looking at more dots and going, damn, let's connect this dot. Let's, let's, put, it, let's put this in. Let's put, so I'm painting it. I'm, it's being a painter and painting this portrait. You know, like, like my man did for Astro World and, like future did for you know, <laughs> like I'm creating pictures, and I see them all in my head, and, and there's people that's gonna bring my my, uh, my thoughts and my patterns and everything to fruition. You know, so I want 
So Silver Fox, this is the time quickly right before I wrap things up that I give a chance for the individual that does slide into the radio station airwaves. Just a chance to give shoutouts to whomever they want to give shoutouts to. But of course your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you and stay updated everything the legendary Silver Fox and your newest projects if they're not already doing so. Why, well, thank you. I greatly appreciate that. To shout out a few people, you know, and, and I know so many people. Well, first of all, DJ Steve, I want to shout you out. You know what I mean? My man, Dow Fortune. You know what I mean? Give a shout out to you. And, uh, you know, uh, shout out to Grandmaster Cat. You know, because we got a little something, something coming or something. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to talk about that one because everybody's got it on the hush. So, um, and, uh, and I know so many people that if I start shouting out individuals, then I'm going to leave somebody out. So, I'm going to give a shout out to everybody before I start saying that, you know, on Facebook, you can find me, Reginald, Silver Fox, Hobby, you know, I got another page, Reggie, Hobby, you know, I got a MC Silver Fox group, and then you could go into the group, friends of MC Silver Fox, friends who like MC Silver Fox, uh, my Twitter, Silver Fox, 125. I uh, gave you the sound car. I'm at, uh, I'm everywhere. LinkedIn, uh, Silver Fox 125. Um, the best thing to tell you is to Google Silver Fox Music US. And you can scroll everywhere. You can see everything and, and find me. You know what I mean? And plus, I'm easily accessible too. I'm not, I'm not one of those dudes that, that think that they are apart from everybody. <laughs> I like everybody in the group. The social distancing is crazy, man. I just, I need a hug. <laughs> That's funny. That was a joke. But yeah, just Google Silver Fox Music US. And I gotta say, Silver Fox, thank you so much again for just taking a little bit of your time this evening and coming on the radio station, you know, and talking to us about your old stories and your newest projects, man. Um, I just want to say first and foremost, man, while I have you here, I gotta give you your flowers, man, and say thank you for paving the way for so many legendary artists, man. You know, you're a pioneer. You've been doing this stuff. You you saw the beginning of hip hop in New York. Like I, I'm gonna be honest. Me personally, as a hip hop head and interviewer, I would have loved to see that. But I just gotta say thank you for just giving us your time and also paving the way for other amazing individuals just like yourself. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. 
Okay, now thank everybody, all your listeners. You know what I mean? Mad love and stay safe and uh, and bless us. You know what I mean? Most definitely, Silver Fox. Thank you so much again. Have yourself a wonderful night. Okay, you too, now.